Well, I'd like to say hello and welcome to uh, the beautiful Amber Baker, also known as the Malibu Medium, that's joining me today on Diva Chasing the Divine, uh, someone who specializes in um, the Akashic Records and connects to loved ones on the other side, brings through psychic energy, but this is her specialty. And I just had the privilege, Amber, of, you know, uh, working with you in the spirit school with Squamish Medium and also just, you know, for us exchanging and tuning in with each other has just been such a beautiful, enlightening experience for me and so um beautiful to have you here today and to share about what are the akashic records so thanks for joining me amber thank you so much for having me i'm very excited to be today and to talk about yeah the akashic records and whatever else you would like to ask me <laughs> <laughs> awesome well i mean i think for me i find your uh story about how you've come into being a spiritual practitioner and you know coach life coach and somebody who's helping other people um i'd love for you to share with everybody like how did you get here um what has your spiritual journey been like what was your awakening like and um who were you before all of this yeah. Okay. So my journey, I, I believe that we all, the minute we're born, we're on a spiritual journey, right? We're, we're always waking up to our spiritual essence. And it's almost like that is one of our purposes in life. So when I was, my journey started when I was a young girl, I would astral travel. I would dream of being like in my dreams, I would have beings talk to me, you know, like I didn't know who they were. They felt angelic. Um, so I had a lot of spiritual mystical experiences with spirits visiting me. So I feel I was born very open, like this open vessel. Um, and Yet I never pursued, you know, being a psychic medium or being a spirit communicator in any way. In fact, I would run from these experiences. I was terrified. I really tried to turn off my gifts, but no matter what I did, spirit would come. No matter where I moved to, I would think, you know, oh, it's the house I'm living in. But then, you know, spirit would visit me even on vacation. <laughs> so it was you know, I do, I, I had that kind of beginning um, journey with being very close to other realms. Like I said, I would visit other realms in my dreams. I would see my past lives in my dreams. And my grandmother and my grandfather um, were spiritual. My grandfather was, I guess you would say a spiritual leader. And my grandmother was very, um, she was actually psychic and she read angel cards. And so she was kind of my um, someone who I would go to when I was younger, we would read angel cards together and she would teach me what she knew, but it, it, so it was nice to have her, but I went along, you know, in my life, I guess, like everyone else kind of going to college, getting married, having children. And I went to art school and I kind of went down the, the path of, um, pursuing my art artistic pursuits because I have always been an artist as well. And it wasn't until my near-death experience, I was 39 years old. This was November of 2018. I had a near-death experience. Um, and that was what completely changed my world, shifted things upside down. And really this near-death experience was also a divine intervention. And when I did leave my body and, and meet God and Archangel Michael and Mother Mary was there, they did tell me it was a divine intervention and that I was a healer and that I was meant to write books. And so I believe that that experience that I had was the universe and my spirit team or whoever you want to say, helping me redirect the compass and how I was leading my path. Because at that time I was very far out of my center. I was very much um, going through a hard time in my life, but also I turned away from spirituality at that time. So I guess you could call it a dark night of a soul, the dark night of the soul, but really it was a divine intervention. And after that, I, like I said, my life was changed. All my senses were open. My third eye was activated. All I could tell you, it was like everything, all the things that I had before, all the ways in which I connected to the spirit world was dialed up, turned up by, you know, a thousand. So 
it was almost as if I had no choice, but I, but yet it woke up inside of me, the purpose that I feel that I have in this lifetime, which is to communicate with spirit, to communicate and channel the divine realm and to really ultimately, I believe to help other people connect and activate their divine essence. So long story short, that was kind of a little bit of the journey and how I started, you know, getting into this work. Um, I mean, I guess I'm just so curious to like what a near death experience entails, you know, like, um, you know, both of us being mediums and meeting souls on the other side, it's like, I've kind of seen glimpses of what they tell me they see, but what was it like for you? Like the feeling of your soul leaving your body and that kind of thing. Like, what was that actual experience like? So what happened was I, I was having a severe asthma, um, flare up. I, I, I had, I have to say just a little context here. When I was seven weeks old, I also almost died from double pneumonia and I was in the NICU and it was a very touch and go thing. And so from that time when I had double pneumonia, I had weak lungs and I have always had asthma during my life. So leading up to the near death experience, I got sick with kind of like a cold, but this was like, I can't even explain how bad this cold was. It felt like COVID. I have to say I couldn't breathe. It was like a ton of bricks in my chest. And because I have asthma, it was very mm, intense. And so I was in and out of the hospital before the near-death experience. I was seeing a lung specialist. I had a breathing machine at home and I was very scared. And I felt like, you know, maybe I would die from this asthma. And so it was one night when I was kind of not really sleeping anyways, because every breath was laborious for me. Mm -hmm. I was praying to my grandmother in spirit. So my grandmother was my best friend she and I are, we're so close, but she had already crossed over. And so I was praying to her and she walked in through the, my bedroom door and she came as like a white kind of hazy silhouette. And she came over my body and she kind of energetically embraced me. Like she sent me love and peace, but she started to breathe for me and open my chest. Mm. So when she, when I felt like she was helping me breathe, all of a sudden I realized that I was leaving my body and my mind was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And my body was getting smaller and smaller until all of a sudden I looked down and I saw my body and I started to travel with my awareness through this tunnel. And the tunnel was dark ish. It was kind of like not pitch black, but it was dark and it had pink and orange kind of glowing light, I guess you could say it when you're in that realm, all the senses kind of blend together. So it was like, I could feel the color I could, I, it's very hard to describe, but I was traveling through this kind of tunnel. And as I was traveling, I, Archangel Michael came with mother Mary and they started to tell me all these things about my life, how, how I'm not defined by my thoughts and feelings. And I'm not the limited beliefs that I believe about myself or that other people believe about me. And they were showing me emotionally what I was going through at that time. And it was kind of like this life review. And then they were showing me kind of like the truth of who I am and everything was experienced at once. So while I was traveling, they were talking to me and then it was like my, my my consciousness was expanding during this whole time. And I said to them, oh, I, so I'm dead. I I'm dying. I, or I, I, I died because I knew I was completely out of my body. Cause I could, at one point I saw it, but then I went with them kind of down this other tunnel mm-hmm. and they said, you will go back but we're going to show you what it feels like to become one with source. And we're going to show you what your true um, power is that you are a seed in the universe and you are one with source and you are one with all, and you are not the limitations that you put on yourself. You are not your, we, you are not your feelings or thoughts. And so 
they said that I, you know, need to know this. I need to become one with source so I can know what my unlimited potential is. So I, so I can know what my true essence is. And so as I was kind of traveling th through this dimensional space, um, my grandmother was there and I saw her and I was talking to her and I said, grandma, how is this happening? Like, how can this be happening? Because I felt kind of like she took me there. And then she just said, you know, I'm your twin flame. I'm your twin soul. We're always together. We're never separated. And they said, this is a miraculous healing, a divine intervention. And they, they, it was like, I was with them, but I, they told me, they showed me, I don't know how to explain it. They, they, they told me that they were healing my chest and that I needed to release the sorrow, release the grief, release the anger in my life. And I needed to receive, receive their love, receive who I really am. So that was kind of like this, this wow. healing. And then I met God and then I became one with God. I became one with the aspect of myself that is divine. And as I became one with God, what I realized was that God is, is consciousness and that that was how I felt God was, was that we are all streams of consciousness from this one source of consciousness that is omnipotent, om omnipresent, that is all there is, right? That we come from this unlimited, infinite presence. And at the same time, that is who we are. And so when we get so off center with that true essence, when we start to, you know, really what this whole thing, what they showed me was that I basically started to believe my limitations. I, I started to believe the negative thoughts I was thinking. I started to feel that I could only be who I thought I was, that there was, that was the wall. I was living in this box. I needed to break down that wall and to see who I was past my limitations. And so as I became one with this essence I was in eternity. I was in the present moment. I was in the center of my consciousness and I was in complete loving wholeness and bliss. And so, so, and there was much more that happened. They, 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 when I went back in my body, they dropped my consciousness through each chakra and, and they showed me that our consciousness is stored in our chakras and that that's how I re-assimilated back into my body at the end. And they also said they were coming to me for three nights. This first night was a reckoning. The second night was an awakening. The third night was a rebirth. So I know it's a really long story, but no. all to say, um, and that did happen, but all this to say is that they, they really, they told me to spread this message. And so that is what, again, what my purpose is, but I don't know how I would have as strong as a conviction mm. that I have now, if I didn't really know what it was like to become one with source. And if they didn't awaken the divine presence in me, I, I don't know. I, how I could really be this messenger for them. So it was all divinely orchestrated because even with spirit communication, I can guess, you know, how is this happening? And not that I don't believe in the spirit world, but it's like, you know, sometimes you can double guess, like, am I getting the right messages? Like, am I, you know, there's, there can be a questioning, but now there's no questioning in my mind. There's just no questioning. Like that's who we are. That's our true essence. Mm -hmm. And I know what it's like now to be in my divine essence and then to be in my limitations. Like I know a hundred percent the difference. And so I'm very grateful for this experience because it was just such a gift. Wow. Emily, do you feel as though that this connection that we have to source to God, do you mm -hmm. think that we have the capability of feeling that in our lifely bodies and our 3d bodies, like through meditation or, you know, using our intuition, or do you think that it's something supernatural that we only experience in death? So I believe we have glimpses and moments when we can have 
this kind of um, euphoric wholeness. But no, I, I, I really don't believe that we get to this level until we are either crossed over or maybe evolved into an enlightened being because, you know, we, I have accepted too, because I've done a lot of reflection, like you're saying, like, okay, that's what I experienced, but now I'm back in my physical body. And so we, I have to also accept, I mean, I think we have to accept that we are experiencing separation you know, source gave birth to us and, and gave us free will. And the only way that we can really experience our individual divinity is by exercising free will and by, you know, being really our, our own individual expression of how we connect to our divine spark. So everything it's, everything we do is okay. All the choices we make are okay. You know, it's, it's, if we don't experience that wholeness all the time, which I don't think we do, that's okay because it's also a gift, I think, to live this physical dimensional life and have free will, you know? Um, so I don't know if I'm answering it right, but I, I don't think that we can be in the human experience and also be, you know, completely one with sort of everybody. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, because we're in, we are, we are in, you know, we are separate from that, that oneness. But I also believe that we are meant to over and over and over w wake up into it and that it is like our mission to, to keep activating that, but curiosity, questioning. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful, Amber. So, I mean, like, I think that falls really beautifully then into like how you discovered the Akashic records or why you're so passionate about them, you know? So tell us like, what are the Akashic records? Okay. So the Akash, you can explain the Akashic records a hundred ways and it will always be right because it's very hard to explain in one sentence, what the Akashic Records is, you you will discover what the Akashic Records is and means throughout your whole life. So if I were to try to explain it briefly, what I would say is the Akashic Records is this energetic imprint of every living soul and creature's um, consciousness. So it is who we are, it's who we have been and who we are becoming and who we are in the future. So because there is only the present moment, when you access the Akashic records, you're accessing who you are based on your present moment. So you can access the Akashic records for your soul, let's say now, and if you access so if you access a past life, let's say you can heal your past life based on the present awareness that you have now within that memory or within that lifetime. So it's really, it, it's the Akashic records is consciousness. It's the thoughts, choices, memories, and beliefs of who you are, but it is always anchored in your highest path and potential, it is always anchored in source consciousness. So it is always anchored in um, your divine essence. So it explains maybe why you feel the way you feel or make the choices and maybe have done certain things or it will explain you know, the why of things, but it will also then explain the potential around things, the truth around situations or, or the things that you're going through in your life. So it's very layered. It has many layers and levels of awareness. And it is, you know, again, it's, it's the library of your soul, but it's so much more than that. It, you know, I mean, I guess, I, and that's fascinating. And I, what's amazing you say library, because for some reason, I always picture like books, like if there was a book for my soul <laughs> and you could like read the past and like see what's going on now. And then like skip forward to the end chapters. Like I always kind of see it as a library or feel it as a book. Mm -hmm. um, do you, do you see it as like that? Like when you tap into it, do you feel like it is like a book opening for a soul? I think they, they use a lot of symbolic representation so that we can perceive 
what it is, right? Mm -hmm. But it's of course energetic. It's an energetic (laughs) imprint. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, past this physical realm, we create through our consciousness. So if we need to understand and perceive it as a book, then we will create that through our own consciousness. Mm -hmm. I, I used to see a book, but now Um, the way I communicate with the records is through my consciousness and very much just through downloads of information. Hmm. So I'm just wondering like, how is this information or is it different than like psychic energy? So, you know, like I always, I kind of hate the word psychic because psychic makes me feel as though like I can foretell your future kind of thing, you know, like the stereotype that we think. But, you know, for when I feel psychic energy, it feels more to me like projections. Like if you stay on this path, then I feel like this could happen. Do you know what I mean? Um, Like if you and your husband have a conversation like that, you want to have a baby, then the baby will be like, okay, they want to have me, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's a projection. But if you have a conversation where you're like, you know what? I really like our life as it is. We don't want a baby. Then I don't feel that soul attachment. So it's like, you can't really predict the future with psychic Mm -hmm. energy, but it is that, you know, guides or information downloads can come through that can project that path that you're on do you think the akashic records are different like do you think that they're more solid you know no, based I, on, I, yeah. I, no I don't I think hmm. that what I know to be true about the records is that they don't tell you what to do but they will reveal the highest potential or ex- the expanded hmm. vision around something but you have to understand you are also always writing your own Akashic records based on who you are and your awareness in the present moment. And so it will, it can always change. Like you said, if you just, dis- if you decide something, then you're writing your records to dictate the future events that will align to your personal convictions because of our divine free will we are always co-creating our reality we're co-creating with the universe now I do think I love that that. co-creating with the universe yeah that's something I think we don't talk about that's something like my mind doesn't do naturally thinking that I'm co-creating the universe of like what I want my life to look like but that's yeah. such a, a beautiful word, word that we do have like the power to help create it. It's not destined for us, you know? See, and I think that that's, I think a lot of people when they go down their spiritual journey, they can, they, you know, we all need to surrender, right? To some degree, but also we have to understand how much power we have and that although we have destiny, a lot of that destiny is up to us to decide. And we have eternity to evolve, but at the same time, we can kind of claim our destiny more proactively by really utilizing the power that we have to make choices and exercise our divine free will. So if you're like willing and ready to step into your potential and to really, you know, co-create based on that, again, that divinity, that divine essence that is unlimited, then you're going to move mountains by working in the records because you can go to this realm to ask questions around anything really, but to ask questions around like maybe what your highest potential is within this one path or, or, or let's say, you know, what you want to do in one certain endeavor in your life, but you feel very blocked. You feel maybe you're having some fear or emotional triggers, or maybe you're lacking clarity, but as long as you have like a baseline of direction of intention, you can go to the records always, which really connects you to your own soul and to the Akasha guides to ask for for guidance and clarity. Um, so that's like really how I see using the records is so helpful because you're, you're still in your life, making your choices, but you're kind of at the same time connecting to your higher self and your soul to help you, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, make those choices or take action. I feel like that's so much to wrap around my mind. Like <laughs> yeah. even like my brain trying to process yeah. this is like, yeah. this is so painful. Like, so <laughs> like do the Akashic, so you said Akashic guides, like, are they different than our spirit guides? You know, um, it's such a good question. I really don't know. Mm. I think when I, I know that 
there's many, many enlightened beings and divine beings in the Akashic records. Um, so you're not just connecting, you're connecting to, like I said, your higher self, your soul, you're connecting to Akashic guides who have specialties. So certain Akashic guides, there's a, there's a, there's a specialty Akashic guide for every endeavor, podcasting, um, motherhood, th this, and there's, there's, these Akashic guides that have the wisdom and knowledge for certain things. And then there's angels who come through and ascended masters and galactic beings, maybe, maybe avatars of aspects of yourself that are in other dimensions. So usually when I'm doing a reading for someone, I feel a collection of energy that I'm getting the information. I, I mm. don't really feel like it's just one being right. and whether, yeah, whether or not the Akashic guides are your spirit guides, or maybe the spirit guides are there too. I don't know because I don't, I don't pay attention to who the information is coming from more than what I'm getting because I'm, when I'm channeling, I have to just get the information out and through, mm -hmm. but through the prayer and intention of opening the records, you're always calling in, you know, the, and like, <laughs> the, you know, they're the highest, um, beings there are, but I'm not like, well, who are you? Like, which one are right. you? What are you, you know? So I'm more just like, okay, you're here and I feel you. And then just give me the information so I can tell my client, but the other thing too, is that there are times where it will, they will make themselves be known. If it's a past loved one, I always know like, this is your grandfather. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, they kind of show up as a collection of energy. Hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. So I guess, you know, like what blows my mind about all this is that there's nothing tangible to try and place like all these different dimensions of possibility you know like one of my yeah. favorite descriptions of like our highest self or like our soul is like a mandarin orange I can't remember where I heard this uh, method but it's like you know that our highest self is the mandarin orange and each piece is like you know here's michelle mink in 2022 you know here is michelle uh like as a tribal amazonian like that she's living you know like in a, in a in a past life and that it's actually happening at the same time here's the future version of michelle and that they're all still a part of this one higher consciousness and that from that that even our paths and like the choices that we make break off into even smaller pieces of that and that's just so hard to wrap my mind around. Like, do you, what do you think about that? Like, you know? I yeah, know. No, it is. It, it, in fact, working in the records, if you can become very overwhelmed because your, your consciousness is expanded so much, um, that's a whole other topic, but it's a lot of information to, to understand. And it's a lot of concepts and philosophies to understand. And so by working in the records, like I said, your awareness needs to expand and it will, which will help you in your everyday life when you're not in the records. But as far as that, from what I understand, because everything is happening now, which is also believe I'm like, what? Yes. It's so mind boggling. <laughs> it, is, it is our awareness now that creates our, that makes our reality. So what anchors you in your reality is your identity as Michelle in this physical dimension, but you are also experiencing other realities and dimensions at the same time. And the way that I understand that is that as we are streams of consciousness emanating from source, as if you can think of those like a sun with the rays of light coming out of the center, if you have your own individual expression of your divinity as that ray of light coming out from the sun, the central sun of source, as your ray of light, your consciousness, your stream of consciousness is coming out from that center, you're passing through all dimensions of reality. You're passing through everything that exists, right? Because we're all connected. So as you pass through dimensions, you're experiencing yourself in those dimensions. But we have these veils around us that, you know, you've heard this, like, right? Like crossing a veil, like the crossing over to the other side that, that separate us, that create 
separation and awareness in this, the reality that we're in. But if you really practice meditation and expansion and maybe go into your records, you can pull forward an aspect of who you are on another dimension or on another timeline or reality. So that's the only way that I can wrap my head around. I love that. That's a beautiful image. I I mean, I'm so visual. I always need like an aid like that to simplify it. Right. Cause it's so complex. It's like, I know, I know there's science that backs all this up, but I'm like, I don't even know if I could even get there. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes like I have to tell myself, it's okay that you don't know everything. I don't need to know everything. Right. Although you want to know everything and you want to access the records, you know, once you do you're you're, you get so excited because you feel like, oh, I got the answer to that. I got the answer to that. Answers are always changing and it's, it's okay that we don't know everything. It's okay that we don't understand everything, you know, mm. at, the same, at least that's how I feel. I love it. I mean, can you give me an example of like how the Akashic records changed your life or has influenced your life? Yeah. I think that it's like having this guiding light. It's having, you know, like a best friend, a therapist, it's having this this place to go to, to receive higher wisdom. So I, I like to go into my records multiple times a day. I do it very casually now. I mean, I do use like sacred ritual if I'm doing a reading, let's say, and I, op- I use the prayer that I have to open the records, but I just use the Akashic records now as an, as a form of prayer, as a form of like, just having Uh, like I said, a realm to go to, to help me bring clarity and guidance. So I definitely don't know how I could not work in the Akashic records now, just because I received so much clarity. Um, And I would say that one of the most amazing things about working in the records is in the expansion of your awareness, you're able to see things from a bigger picture and from a higher perspective, mm-hmm. and you're able to understand things from these different layers and levels. Whereas before in my life, it was very black and white. Like I feel this, so uh, now I'm going to have you know bad day because I'm sad. It was just very narrow, and I I didn't have that expansion. And now I can even understand maybe someone when they're maybe doing something or saying something to me that's not the nicest I can kind of understand the layers around that their point of view maybe where they're coming from and then I can I can look for higher meaning in things so it's just really it's it's working in the records expands your awareness as a person Mm. And do you think like everybody can access the records themselves? Like this is a something because like, you know, what I found through like Reiki and sound healing and, you know, shamanism and all these things that, you know, as soon as we, I I mean, I always believe in the golden rule, like asking you'll receive. Like if I, if I ask or create an intention to do something, to see something, to feel something that I will receive it in some way, maybe not how I thought I would, but I can still um, receive that. So is there any way that like, you know, a normal person like can be make the intention to spiritually tune in and be like I want to access my Akashic records do you feel like that that's possible or do you feel like it has to be guided from like a mentor no I feel I feel just like any kind of modality if you have guidance around how to perceive the knowledge you know it's important that you understand really you know how to channel how to understand the messages a lot of people with no spiritual background like the fact you know if you're not a medium or psychic or you have no experience maybe connecting to other realms you'll probably miss the messages you get because you just won't understand like the technique of like what's happening so Mm -hmm. with a little bit of guidance you know anyone can open the record but it will be easier for you Hmm. or someone who maybe works with their senses to know how to receive the information. Um, Like I know that I've taught my dad how to read the records. Wow, really? (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, he's, and yeah, he's really cute. Um, He's this corporate kind of guy, like he, and, and he, you know, as I'm his mentor, it's very interesting and it's very, 
informative for me to understand what it's like to work with someone with zero knowledge around mm. psychic senses and how to perceive things because you know I've had to teach him when you receive messages if it's a download of thought so he thought it was oh no that's my thought but it will feel like your thought but then there's these little tricks but it will feel like an energetic drop in your mind you know like there's all these little things so it's just it's more about yes anyone can do it mm -hmm. um, and maybe people with zero knowledge will you know go off and running and be no problem but if you if just with a little bit of guidance i think you know some people might need, might just need a little bit of understanding about like how to how they're receiving messages mm -hmm. so that they can so like, it, it is accessible it is like you know it's something that's accessible I guess is what yeah, I guess it, what... It, it can't not be because it, mm. it's you're you're accessing your soul and that's lives inside <laughs> of you, our consciousness and that is who we are mm. so it is there's nobody can ever tell you that you can't open the records as a collective as we are expanding our consciousness it's becoming more and more available because our souls you know our human being we're we're just becoming more ready to experience it maybe but it's always been there hmm. and ever, like you know I, I'm not sure if you well I'm sure you do like you can feel the like the shift of what's happening in the world right now just like this great awakening people being more curious about their spirituality and I feel like that's the gift of COVID right we're all like what is this what am I here for what am I doing yeah. um you know there is just like all these big shifts happening on such a grand scale like for you as a spiritual mentor as a teacher um you know a reader of Akashic Records what is your hope for people right now? Like, what do you hope that people will come to discover, like through your own experience of spirituality and, you know, the transformation you've seen in your clients, what do you kind of hope for, you know, humanity or the greater good right now? I guess I would hope for empowerment. Um, I think that there's a lot of agendas out there that are trying to rob people from connection with their their divine essence with their the power that they have with their choice the power that they have to co-create and you know i did it i actually did a podcast episode about this i kind of called it the battle or the war of consciousness you know we have free awareness we we are conscious beings that's who we are but when we give our power away because we're conditioned to kind of just follow rules without questioning or follow, you know, um, structure, old structures and paradigms without questioning, you know, this is the time to, to break rules, break paradigms and to start to question the agenda and the conditioning that we have so that we can really create change, but create change from empowerment and create, make choices in our life, like be bold, be courageous and, you know, question everything and just wake up to who we're all equal in our power. So like, let's stop giving so much power to anyone in our life. We have to wake up our own power, but then also use power, right? Because people can get carried away with the power that we all have. We want to use the power that we have to create positive change and to love one another. You know, we want to um, yeah, just be, we got it. We just got to wake up. <laughs> right. I love that. Wow. Beautiful. Um, so thank you so much for, um, today. These are such beautiful, powerful statements, um, really inspiring too. And, um, what I love is that it just makes us think about all the possibilities, all the layers, all the dimensions of who we really are. Um, and I love that you kept using the word essence. That's such a beautiful way to describe like our highest self. Like what is the essence of me? What am I doing here? What is my purpose? Um, and that we do have the answers to that, you know, that, you know, God source wants us to know the answers to that in this lifetime. We're not supposed to be just flailing around listening to, you know, other people in power, you know, that we are supposed to know these answers for ourselves. So that is empowering. 
And um, I think you do have it still that Akashic prayer that you like that people can use. I know you have one on your website. Um, yeah. That's beautiful that you can actually, um, you know, if you sign up for Amber's um, subscription, uh, her email uh, newsletter that you can receive this prayer so that people can start to you know, explore for themselves. Um, and then obviously, you know, book a session with you. Um, you know, Amber, you're just so inspiring, uh, beautiful insight. And there's just something so authentic about uh, the way you describe spirituality, the way your path has been, the way that you deliver messages. You know, I feel like every time that I've worked with you, there's just been always a takeaway, something that resonates with me long term. And that's when I know it's, you know, it's coming from a higher place. You know, so I, I if you guys are curious about this, please check out Malibu Medium, um, her podcast too. I can't remember the name. Is it fe- something about fearless? Or- yeah, it's called... I'm like, it's such a long name, but it's called Your Light is Fearless. Yes. Yeah. I love that. So check out her podcast as well. And um, Amber, do you have anything else coming up? Like I know you offered courses and stuff like that, but where else can people find you? Yeah. If if you go to my Instagram at Malibu Medium or my website is the Malibu Medium.com, I I am putting together an online group class on how to read the records. Um, I have a wait list on my link in bio and my Instagram for that class. So that will be, you know, like a, a group class where I teach you how to read the records. And I'm also interested in talking about fear and confidence and how to take embodied action. So I'm also working on some sort of class. I don't know how it's going to come together, but um, I have all these things in my mind that I'm working on. And I just, you know, I, for now you can book sessions um, and I do private mentorship, but I am working on, like I said, more group courses coming soon. Beautiful. Well, thank you, Amber, for joining me today and for breaking down a very complex, um, you know, but potentially accessible uh, way for us to find out more information about ourselves in this life and to live our our fullest potential and to live um, with our, you know, our true essence. So thank you so much, Amber Malibu Medium. Check her out on Instagram and check out her podcast. Thank you so much, Amber. Thank you, Michelle. I love talking to you and I'm very glad to be here with you today. Thank you.